so what's up guys um so I wanted to uh talk brief just briefly because today was the launch of Al Jazeera America now it's on, it launched at approximately um, noon time Pacific Standard Time um, Pacific Daylight Time whatever you, the fuck you want to call it I, I fucking hate that all that bullshit anyway it launched uh, this afternoon uh, and a lot of people have been skeptical including myself um, there's just been a lot of controversy surrounding it mainly because it's it's been a news source that some consider biased because it's you know it it's state uh, Al Jazeera is um, it started in Qatar it's state own it's a, a state media of Qatar but it's so much more than that it, it's become the news source of the Arab world and has become a uh, big it's become a very reliable source I mean I use it uh, from time to time too I mean I just find it very reliable and they speak the truth and it's a lot you know as I told somebody earlier it's a lot better than the bullshit that the corporate media of the United States puts out. But that's where in where the problem lies. Because uh, in 2006, uh, Al Jazeera English was launched. And it's, I mean, obviously, you know, great, great source of information. However, some access to Al Jazeera English recently has been restricted in the United States. Along with that comes the controversy of Al Jazeera America being launched on American airwaves. The fact that it took, you know, basically took over uh, current TV, which is, was falling out of favor. So it really kind of leads to the point, where will Al Jazeera go from here? Can it gain an audience? Can it gain favor? In America, can it uh, be able to stand, continue to stand up and maintain its real, you know, real news without selling out to the corporate media or being intimidated by the corporate media? And most importantly, you know, can it really, you know, again, can it live up to its standards? That's where it all stands because again, this is where that's where it all gets really controversial and where it's all really it gets really flimsy, because especially considering that some of the people that run Al Jazeera came from places like CNN and ABC, or the cable news network and American Broadcasting Corporation, which are which one happens to be owned by Walt Disney Corporation, but that's you know. I could go into big rants about that, but I'll just kind of save it. Um, this is really fucking bugging me. I'll have to fix that later. Um, but anyway, my point is, is that it's, it's so far from what I've seen, I cannot tell because I need to watch it further. I'm probably going to watch it for the next week or so to see what I can get out of it. But Al Jazeera has always maintained a certain level of credibility and certain level of real journalism, and that's why a lot of people are flocking to it. That's where another thing comes in. That's where the good side of this comes in. Journalists that want to do real journalism and get into real stories, the actual juicy stuff, and not be focused on you know, the fucking celebrities and you know stuff like that, they wanted to come to Al Jazeera, and that's why you see so many people that are flocking from CNN and um, all these other news networks, MSNBC and stuff like that. They're flocking to Al Jazeera America or, or to the Al Jazeera um, news network in general because Al Jazeera is known for doing actual fact-based research that isn't just based upon you know, a bunch of bullshit spew spewed out by, you know, corporate chills. So, it's, that's where it kind of, you know, stands. So, you know, you look have to look at it on both sides. Um, so that's where it kind of stands. Um, so, again, I can't say where my opinion personally on Al Jazeera, 
I can say from what I've watched so far today, the two hours I've watched from it. <sighs> Hello, Rock Addict. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, uh, basically, uh, from what I've watched in the last two hours since it's launched, um, I'm, I, I like it. It's so far. I, I'm not gonna say it lives up to all my standards yet, if it ever does. But we'll just kind of keep that in mind. It, it just kind of, it just kind of keeps playing on that thing. Um, but yeah. And so uh, it just kind of is. It, it just is one of those things that I have to obviously look more into. But all that aside. Um, the thing I really wanted to get into uh, also was um, there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about. Um, one of them I actually came one of the things I came across uh, was the stuff about uh, study about marijuana, in which um, the marijuana apparently a new study has been found that says that cannabis actually helps patients w um, uh, with schizophrenia uh, in the sense that it found that cannabis users perform better on memory tasks than those who avoided it. The study was published in the scholarly journal Psychiatric Research um, and it's, this research comes from out of Canada. Uh, the University of Montreal studied 145 patients with dual diagnosis cannabis dependence and schizophrenia and 14 patients with schizophrenia uh, and 14 patients with schizophrenia only um, the results suggest that emotional memory and prefrontal lobe functioning are preserved in dual diagnosis patients according to the researchers uh, they saw no difference between the emotional responses of the two groups during resting states, although patients were evaluated based on emotional memory. Um, MRI um, or, mag or magnetic resonance imaging um, were performed and revealed better brain function in the area responsible for complex thinking and decision making, uh, uh, reports truthonpot.com. Now, I will be posting the links to all these um, Including a abstract summary from the psychiatric, uh, you know, from the NCBI website, um, because it's a very bit article that we you probably should all see. And plus, it's given the fact that I've come across a lot of people that are anti marijuana legalization, who make up these basis claims of why it should remain illegal, you know, such as Concerned Mom 420 that I can't, did a video about the other day. Um, she, you know, it's those people that kind of annoy me, and that's why I, uh, you know, tend to do these videos, because I expose these facts. So, you, again, go read the study, it's really kind of interesting, and it basically comes out that half of schizophrenia patients, uh, also suffer from a substance use disorder, um, so, um, so it's kind of one of those things that marijuana tends to kind of help treat a lot of these, um, you know, that helps treat a lot of these people that have these problems. Um, so you might want to go research research it yourself, but you know, quite honestly, I thought that it was that was just so fucking. Uh, it, it, just the more I read up on marijuana, the more that you know the people that are so far against it j they just really don't have a claim for it they really have no reason to be other than the fact that the, you know that they think that you know it'll you know I, really they're just following what you know their capitalist people think anyway but that was all that all aside it's kind of funny in addition to uh, to all this, um, federal the federal drug um, agency has also come out 
and admitted that they really know nothing when it comes to, well, to, to marijuana. And they know less about it than alcohol. According to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, the, uh, they, uh, they released a statement on, uh, there was a statement released on PolitiFact on Monday denying that marijuana is less toxic than alcohol. However, claiming that marijuana is less toxic than alcohol cannot be substantiated since each possess their own unique set of risks and consequences for a given individual, wrote the Institute. Now, um, the statement was in response to a declaration by the ProPot Policy Group Marijuana Policy Project that marijuana is less harmful than alcohol, a claim that was centered a centerpiece of a controversial pro-marijuana commercial aired during a NASCAR race. PolitiFact took the claim to task, comparing marijuana-related deaths to alcohol-related deaths and toxicity levels of the two substances. As noted by PolitiFact, which by the way is a pretty reliable source, I would suggest you go use that if you ever have any questions, uh, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention's National Center for Health Statistics reported that 41,682 alcohol-related deaths in 2010, the center had no reports listing marijuana as a cause of death. Again, once again going to prove that marijuana does not kill anybody. You know, despite the baseless and ridiculous claims of the far right. Uh, it also noted, PolitiFact also noted a study by Robert Gable um, that measured the toxicity levels of substances ranging from heroin to marijuana and showed that marijuana is about a hundred times safer than alcohol or cocaine. So again, one of the reasons why it's kind of stupid why marijuana is in the Schedule 1 drugs, which basically states that it's danger more dangerous than cocaine when it isn't. It's even less dangerous than alcohols and alcohol and and or tobacco, and yet marijuana is illegal because America. Um, essentially, though, they they basically have. This is basically what it came to. Uh, Mason uh, Tavert, the director of communications at Marijuana Policy. Paul's uh, project said that it, the NIDA's claims is a new low for the agency. Our federal government has been exaggerating the harms of marijuana for decades. This is true. But at this point, it has gone off the deep end. They basically, essentially, they go into talking how they, you know, our government and other federal agencies just know jack diddly shit. So, um, it's kind of... <laughs> It's just really interesting, and I will post the Huffington Post article um, about this because it's just, again, it, it, this should come as no surprise. I mean, the far right has been claiming that marijuana is it needs to remain illegal because it's this dangerous substance that kills people and, you know, leaves people, you know, keeps people in poverty. No, it's the capitalist system that keeps people in poverty. Well, some people just don't want to work, but there are. But mostly, it's the capitalist system that keeps people in poverty. And it's also the whole fact that uh, you know they keep using it. This these basis claims that marijuana is so is just so dangerous when there, when it actually there's studies all the time that come out saying that marijuana is actually probably about as is probably just about as safe as any as anything I mean it marrow I mean really there's nothing that really shows that there's really too many risks involved with marijuana there's not really any risks involved you know other than in fact you'll get the munchies and you know you know and, and go either one way be productive or want to lay on the couch um you know <laughs> but you know it depends on what type of shake you get um but yeah it's just kind of one of those things that i i really have it up to here with right-wing idiots that make this claim and so the fact that it that uh that the these 
studies and other things are coming out and plus PolitiFact actually even take you know having taken a, a a stance on this is really interesting too now of course conservatives are going to go saying oh well PolitiFact's you know corrupted and by the it's part of the liberal media which they probably will but PolitiFact is a non-biased, non-partisan, independent source that off, that weighs both sides. They've criticized the Republican Party. They've criticized the Democratic Party. They've criticized George W. Bush and Mitt Romney and those guys. And they've criticized President Obama and Hillary Clinton and all that. They've they they are very open and honest and personally. I like using them. I don't often post links to them very often, but usually I go and check my sources um, through PolitiFact because it's just such a reliable source. I mean, mo I mean, even I've even talked to libertarians that have used that, and you know, as much as I hate libertarianism, you know, when they actually go checking their facts it makes what they say at least a little bit more credible you know not saying I'm going to agree with it or anything like that but at least they have something to back up their goddamn mouth which is more than I can say for other right-wing conservatives um, and uh, lastly um, I'm going to do a video this week on two thing uh, two things coming up um, I'm going to talk a bit about Caitlin Hunt again because I am reaching a verdict where I stand on that. Um, and in case you don't know what, who Caitlin Hunt is, you'll figure it out when the video comes out. But basically, the Florida teenager that um, was in a lesbian relationship and knew the other girl was underage, and yeah, 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 yeah. So I'll get into that um, it, this week. I also want to get into talking about the um, about this anti-protest law that basically obliterates our First Amendment freedoms. That will be out this week as well. And then Sunday on commentary, um, I will. I am in the works of trying to put together a commentary on uh, socialism and maybe communism thrown in there. I haven't decided if I'm going to do them separately or together um, mainly because they are two, still two separate things be, but at the same time they're linked because again socialism is you know the transition from capitalism to communism but we'll get into that. Um, we'll just kind of have to see. I, I haven't really decided on that um, most likely I'm going to just do the full circle of socialism communism together in the commentary but again we'll get into that um, but until then I uh, just wanted to get, keep you guys updated on that with some some of that stuff and uh, yeah thank you for watching I'm gonna return a text back to uh, rock uh, addict 420 so um, uh, who texted me during this video. So until then, again, peace, guys. I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and this has been NorCal Corner. <laughs>